Martin Lincoln. Schrock Innovations presents the Midwest's number one independent computer repair company with service centers in Lincoln, Omaha, Papillion, Des Moines, and across the country via the Schrock desk. This is Compute This. Good morning, folks, and welcome into Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company. The number to join us on the program this morning, 888 250 2091-888-250-2091. we got a great show planned for you today. Before we get started, I want to remind everybody that uh, we are broadcasting live right now at facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. Uh, all you have to do there, if you uh, just go to Facebook, type facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. And then, you know, like, boom, you can see the show right there. It's just in your face right there. So that's pretty fun stuff. Uh, also... For those of you who are not aware, all of our shows are posted. Sometimes you don't Facebook, right? Uh, and you're like, I wish I could watch Thor, but I don't, I'm not going to do Facebook. Well, all the video is posted on our website at schrockinnovations.com the following Monday after the program. So if you miss it out or you, you have to go into church or whatever the case might be, there was a story we were going to get to and you missed it, you can always check it out on the website at schrockinnovations.com. Now, of course, most people end up at schrockinnovations.com because their computer is broken. Uh, or they need a new computer because they want to get Windows 11. Or maybe they uh, have a, a hard drive that's failed and they need to get that data, those pictures and things, off of the drive. We got a guy dropped off a cell phone in the Omaha Service Center on Thursday that he ran over with a car. Literally, it was like he did a beautiful job with the packing tape, keeping all the glass together. Um, it's all there. It's just crushed. <laughs> So we're going to see about getting all of his kids' pictures back off of it. So there's a lot of things that uh, that we do over at Schrock to help you out with your technology lives. I saw questions coming through our Facebook Messenger about everything from PlayStations to, you know, charging phones to, you know, literally anything technology-related, Schrock Innovations is there to help you out. And that's what we want to do on the program this morning as well, 888-250-2091. That's 888-250-2091. Two zero nine one, and as we do every week, one lucky caller will get a uh, get drawn at the end of the program for a twenty five dollars Schrock Innovations gift certificate that uh, will give you in the service center good toward anything your heart desires. All you have to do is call and be a part of the program. There is no such thing as a silly question. All right, so last week on the show, you know, we told you a little bit more about the Windows eleven rollout. Uh, we went over some security stories. It was a great show all the way around. I would encourage you to check it out over at schrockinnovations.com. Coming up on the program today, um, I, I hate doing these kind of pushes with you guys, but there's only days left before Windows 10s, Windows, Windows 10s, Windows 10s, Windows 10s big update. Yeah, I guess that would be grammatically correct. Fact check me on that one, but Windows 10s big update to 21H2 is coming out. Uh, we've been focused a whole lot on Windows 11 and getting people to move to Windows 11 uh, so that they could have that lower cost of ownership, that increased level of security. Um, at the same time, though, Windows 10 is a perfectly good operating system until 2025. So it's important you stay current on your updates so that you maintain those security patches. And we're going to tell you a little bit more about that coming up on the program today because that is coming up very quickly. Uh, Microsoft also has released a fix, well, on their inside beta tester ring, for my computer. Yes, apparently, if you have a Threadripper processor and you have Windows 11, you actually have a slower computer. It was very, very frustrating to find. Uh, but good news is, you know, when your computer is has 24 cores of processing power instead of the normal 8, and, you know, you lose 15% of them, it doesn't hurt so bad. So, uh, but I want my 15% back. And so <laughs> they're going to release a patch to fix that. So there's some good news there. Uh, we... Also, today on the program, I'm going to take a little bit of time. I, I like to make sure we do some segments on the show that give you the opportunity to, to do something different or new or better with your computer. Uh, and one of the things I really want to focus on today, there was a story, you know, and like I said, every week I could, I could hit you guys with stories. Of, the world is collapsing. Ransomware is increasing. Here's one from this week. Google says we're sending out more phishing and malware attack warnings than ever before, to, basically to Gmail's people. Uh, like don't don't click that link. Don't open this email. Removing emails from your inbox because they're illegitimate. They're doing that more than ever before. So that's the story. But the lesson in the story, the moral of the story, if you will, is we need to up our personal security games, guys. Um, people fall for this stuff because they're uninformed. People answer the call when Microsoft calls them and tells them their IP address has a virus. 
Um, people, when they get the, the email saying that they want a free Home Depot gift card, they click the link. I literally deleted that from my inbox this morning. That's a real life example. Um, when you get text messages saying that you've got a, you want an Amazon gift card if you just take a survey and you tap that link on your phone, the days of it being safe. We used to say on the on the radio show, if you get an email and it looks a little fishy, tap on it from your phone because your phone is far less likely to get infected than your computer. That's not true anymore. But nobody nobody has antivirus on their phones. Well, some some shock people do. But the majority of people do not have any virus protection whatsoever on their phones. And worse yet, a bunch of the security apps that are made for phones are actually made by shady people that make viruses. So chicken in the hen house, rooster, you know, eggs comes first thing. It's really rough, right? <laughs> but... Uh, I want to talk today a little bit about upping your security game. And it's not just going to be the normal, like, make sure you change your passwords and things like that. Some specific concrete things that you can do to improve your privacy and your security on the Internet. Because, you know, we get a lot, we get focused a lot, right, on, you know, making sure that we have a VPN so that, you know, the, the big government people can't snoop on you. And, you know, then we want to make sure we have good passwords so that the cyber criminals can't get you. And then we want to make sure, and you start going down the list, the ransomware, we got to, we can't have the ransomware. We got to have a cold storage backup of everything. And, you know, at the end, you realize that all these people are just the same, right? They're just the same. They're all, they all want to get into your, your digital computer for some reason and do you harm for some reason, whatever that reason might be. So uh, we just want to make sure we stay as clean as possible, full well knowing that it's impossible to be completely protected because they discover new vulnerabilities every week. And that's why we cover them here on the program. Uh, that's why there's monthly updates for Windows. That's why moving to Windows 11, if your computer supports it, is such a big deal to us. It genuinely increases the security of your computer. It genuinely lowers the cost of ownership of your computer. You will pay Schrock less money if you upgrade to Windows 11 over time. For real. Like, yes, I know. We want you to upgrade to Windows 11. Yes, you'll pay us less money over time, but it's okay in the end. Because we'd rather have customers that are safe and secure and loyal than customers who come to us out of necessity because they get compromised every other day of the week and we say, oh, shucks, that's just the way it is, I guess. You know, 888-250-2091. So real quick here, this update that's coming from Windows 10, what is it? Um, as you may or may not know, there are two updates every year for Windows 10. Microsoft calls them updates, but they are actually brand new installations of the Windows 10 operating system. This is like going from Windows 95 to Windows 98 to Windows Millennium to Windows 2000. You, every time you get one of these updates, it's a brand new operating system that's installed on your computer. All of your files and folders and everything are migrated into it. All your programs are migrated into it. And when your computer reboots, if everything goes according to plan, you've got the new version of Windows 10 plus all your stuff. It looks just like an update to you. In fact, Microsoft has even started downloading these updates to your computer ahead of time over time, which is why we know it's coming very soon because the cake is baked. The 2.1.H2 update has been finished. It is, it's wrapped. It's sealed. It's done. It's ready. It's going out to computers right now so that when the day comes on release, they can flip the switch and say, okay, reboot your computer and get your new update. Well, we don't want that to automatically happen to your computer, and here's why. When this update comes out, and it will come out, but you, we're expecting it before the end of the month. So if that, when I say there's only days left, depending when you hear this program, there are literally only days left for you to make sure that you get this done safely. So at the, when the update hits, 80% of people are going to be just fine. They're going to get the update. Everything's going to be right with the world. You know, the sun's going to come up. The birds will chirp. It'll still be fall. The Huskers will still lose by a touchdown. The life will go on. It's just everything will be normal, right? Now, once that happens, I said 80% of the people are going to have that experience. 20% of the people are going to have a very different experience. They're going to have a computer that doesn't reboot the next day. And they're going to come in and have to pay us a couple hundred bucks on the bench to fix it. They're going to have a computer that reboots, but all their stuff is gone. And they're going to have to come in on the bench and pay a couple hundred bucks to have us fix it. Or they're going to get a computer that reboots just fine, but the update didn't take. So it rolls back. And the next day it tries again, and it fails, and it rolls back. 
and you get into this Groundhog Day scenario where every day your computer is downloading a massive update and taking a half an hour to reboot, and then when it reboots, it says it failed, and it takes a half an hour to roll it back, and it reboots again, and then it tries again tomorrow. Um, that's obviously not good. And then, of course, we have those people who just aren't going to get it automatically. Yes, believe it or not, there are some people that Microsoft has deemed the deplorables of computing. They, they are so old. Their computers are more than like three years old, and they're just not going to get the update, right? So if your computer is deemed by Microsoft to be at risk of damage from the update, in Microsoft's opinion, they don't send the update. The problem is you don't get any notification that says you're not getting the update. You think everything's going right with the world. In fact, you just got security updates. I think I got that 21H9 or patch thing. I think I think I got that like like I got that like a year ago, didn't I? Didn't I? Well, if you miss two of them in a row, all of a sudden you don't get security updates for your computer anymore. The the Windows updates just stop and your security situation gets worse and worse and worse and the whole time they don't say a word. So you come in for a maintenance checkup every 6 months and we're like, "Gah, you're running like 20H1." And they're like, "Is that a bird flu?" And we say, no, no, that's like 2020 from the first half of 2020. That's what you're running. You're running the pandemic version of Windows 10. And you need to be running like the inflation version of Windows 10. But you're running the pandemic version still. So we need to get you get you caught up here so you can suffer with the rest of us, okay? So you got to keep it up to date. you got to keep it current. If you don't keep it current, you don't get the security updates. If you don't get the security updates then all of a sudden you have a whole world of hurt because the bad guys can walk into the computer like they own the place, do whatever they want with your stuff, infect it, encrypt it, share it with the public, or just deny your access to it or even use your computer to do nefarious things on the Internet that make them money. You know, sending out huge denial-of-service attacks. Microsoft said it stopped the largest denial-of-service attack ever. It was sending something like, I don't know, hundreds of terabytes of data per second through the internet. Now, most of you have a, of a hard drive. If you have a mechanical hard drive, it's like a, a 500 gig or a terabyte. Maybe you have a two terabyte drive. Imagine sending the entire contents of that hard drive at a website every second. You can't do that. It's not physically possible to transfer that much data from one computer that quickly. But if you get enough computers together in one place, they all start transferring at one time, and you can crush a website. Well, Microsoft literally intercepted an attack. They said it was 50 times larger than the previously largest attack attempt. Yep, yeah, a lot of it comes from Russia. A lot of it comes from China. A lot of it comes from Iran, North Korea. You know, communists be communist and You know, there's nothing you can do. So they're going to attack, and you just have to make sure your security, your defenses are up to par, and a big part of that is making sure your updates are good. So there are two ways you can choose to get the 2-1-H-2 update. Number one, you can just let the world spin. If your computer gets it, it gets it. And if it doesn't, we can deal with that later. If your computer blows up when it gets it, we can deal with that later. There, the, People will do that. People choose that sometimes. Number two, you ever notice that if you have us do this on the bench in the service center, your computer doesn't blow up like ever? Do you ever notice that when you take it home, you always have the update installed? Even if you're multiple versions behind? Ever notice when you come in for a maintenance checkup and we tell you you're behind and then you have us install it, you get it back and everything is just fine? That's because when we do this on the bench, we have a very specific way that we install this update so that we ensure that, number one, your computer is stable to do the update at the beginning because most of the failures happen because there's some problem with the computer the user doesn't know about. A power supply that's faulty interrupts in the middle of the update. A uh, hard drive that's failing, memory that's bad. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong during this update with hardware and things like that. So we want to make sure you have a good hardware platform. Number two, there's ways we can check that. Number two, once we know that that's good to go, we want to make sure that you're virus-free, everything is nice and clean, that you're not having problems. Number three, then we install the update. And instead, Microsoft tries to download just the pieces of the update to you that it thinks your computer needs, which in some cases, can cause a problem. Well, when you do our update, it does take a little bit longer to download because we download the whole Anchorito, everything. The whole update comes down. Any pieces that are not needed are discarded after the fact 
but any pieces that are needed for the update are there on your hard drive to install at that time. That's one of the reasons that our safe upgrade product, whether you do it yourself over the internet or on the bench in the service center, has such a, a high degree of success with a low instance of side effects, if you will. So how do you get it? Number one, I mentioned you can come into the service center, you can drop it off. You know, when the time comes, people say, oh, Thor, you know, I, I'm going to be out of town. How do I, what do I do? If you turn your computer off, it's not going to update. So if you're going to be out of town or something, you know, you're going out of town for Halloween, just turn the computer off at home. It's not going to update in the middle of the night by itself in the dark when it's turned off. Um, you got to turn it on for that. The rest of you, you can either bring it into the service center when the update is released. And of course, we'll announce it on our Facebook page. We'll announce it as well through email and everything else. You'll hear from us when it comes out. Or you can choose to purchase a copy of Safe Upgrade from our website at schrockinnovations.com. This is a $30 cheaper way to do it. So it's a little bit less expensive in a world, in the world where everything is more expensive. Somehow Schrock charges less. Story of my life. God. So, no, you can go get it on the website. You can download it to your computer. And when the time comes to run it, you can run it. If it doesn't work, you can pay the $30 difference and bring it into the service center. If, it, if you run it on the computer and there's a problem after you run it, like it doesn't do the job right, you have a warranty where we fix it for you. So it's literally, it's almost like a form of insurance. It's literally a way to make sure that you're going to get that update installed on your computer perfectly without any problems, any side effects, any, any problems of any kind. And you've got a company behind you that you trust that's backing the installation. Now, again, if you can move to Windows 11, I definitely recommend you choose to move to Windows 11 rather than doing safe upgrade for Windows 10. Windows 11 is more secure. They also only have one of these updates every year instead of two, right? So your cost of ownership is lower over time. But if, you're, if you have to stay on Windows 10 because your computer is not compatible or maybe you just don't want to go to Windows 11 yet, maybe you have a Threadripper processor like me and you're like, I don't want to do that and lose 15% of my processor, then you need the, the 2.1H2 update and we can get that for your computer through Safe Upgrade at schrockinnovations.com. Just click on Shop and then Specials. 888-250-2091. I'm going to take a quick break here on the program. When we come back, Microsoft releases a fix for my processor. We'll tell you exactly. Maybe your processor might be included in this, too. I kind of joke around that it's only people like, you know, that have giant processors. But actually, a lot of AMD processors took a hit, and that's the majority of our modular computers are AMD computers. So if you upgraded to Windows 11 and you noticed that things were a little bit slower after that, Microsoft's got a fix coming down the pipe soon for you. We're going to tell you about it next on Compute This. Today's fragile computers need maintenance more than ever. Your computer needs a maintenance checkup every six months to last beyond its 18-month expected lifespan. External hard drives are handy. You can back up multiple computers to them or even use them to move lots of data from one computer to another. Computer users have been buying the same old external hard drives for years. While our computers have been getting faster, we still do backups that take hours or watch epic progress bars creep by to move files. Schrock wanted more for our customers, so our innovators created the fastest external hard drives on the planet. Schrock modular storage devices are up to 50% faster than Seagate or Western Digital Externals and are modular in the truest sense of the word. We can create whatever size and speed of drive you need for all of your needs and all modular storage devices come with a data restoration guarantee if you use our drives for backing up and your computer's hard drive fails we'll restore your backup to your repaired computer for free fast simple and flexible technology solutions from Schrock Innovations it's what we do compute this pro tip 299 there are enough mothballed computers in US homes to give one to every man woman and child in the country Many of these computers find their way into landfills where they can leak cadmium, lithium, and other nasty chemicals into the groundwater. Schrock Innovations is very proud of the fact that we recycle more e-waste every year than we create. You can drop off any old or broken computer equipment to our service centers at any time free of cost. We only charge $15 just for monitors because they are especially difficult to process. No appointment is required and we accept all computer related equipment like printers, keyboards, speakers and accessories. Additionally, the rare earth elements in computers can be recycled right here in the U.S. to reduce our reliance on supplies from foreign countries. Take a moment, drop off your old computer equipment today, and Schrock will make sure it's properly recycled and put to good use right here in the U.S. This pro tip brought to you by Schrock Innovations Computer Company. 
All righty, folks. Welcome back into Compute This. I'm getting a lot of questions about on the Facebook feed about where's the background? Where's the background? And I'm sorry. To, I mean, I came into work this morning like I do every Sunday morning, and it didn't show. And uh, we're checking with management. There could be a sick out going on here. Uh, but I was not prepared to cancel the program because one employee didn't show up to work. So we're going to keep going. We're going to soldier through this. We promise to get you to your destination on time. But uh, that's just how we roll here on Compute This. 888-250-2091. There are so many awful jokes you can make right now. Just, they're everywhere. And maybe some people don't think they're funny. Maybe some people don't get them at all. But, uh, you know, they're, they're out there. Number one song on iTunes yesterday. My goodness. All right. 888-250-2091. All right. So AMD, Windows 11. We tell you to go to Windows 11, right? And there are some of you out there that said, you know, I think I'm going to just chill out on 10 for a bit. Let them get all the, the kinks worked out of that Windows 11 before I jump into it. Um, this update from a Microsoft upgrade was extraordinarily kink free. Um, there was not a lot of problems, not a lot of glitches. Um, sometimes apparently the old start menu, like somehow resurrects through, it's like peeking through the matrix. <laughs> like there's the windows 11 start menu and then it kind of goes, and then there's the windows 10 start menu again. And then it goes away. Microsoft's going to fix that. They're going to, they're going to, uh, blue pill that one pretty quick. Uh, but, uh, another fix they're coming out with is Microsoft is fixing the AMD CPU performance issue that came out with windows 11. So there was a patch for this actually. So Initially, it was like, okay, I lost, I have a processor that's like ridiculously powerful in my computer because it's doing a lot of things. You know, right now it's doing a ton of things. Um, and then after I went to Windows 11, I didn't notice anything at first. Like everything was fine. Um, but then I started executing a couple of my, my more intensive tasks and I noticed they were taking longer to complete. Then I started to realize not only, not only are they taking longer to complete, that while I'm doing those tasks, the computer is far less responsive than it normally was. Um, like it runs like some some of the computers we work on on the bench before they get solid state hard drives. And I can assure you I have a nice solid state hard drive. So what's going on? Well, there apparently there is a glitch with the way that Windows 11 uses the level three cache memory in AMD processors. Now, this is really important for Ryzen processors because they are loaded to the hilt with L3 cache. And that's what makes them so much more fast, so much more fast. They're so much more fast than Intel. I'm just saying. Uh, they're so much faster than Intel chips uh, because of the amount of L3 cache. Well, Windows 11 doesn't address that properly. It pretty much just ignores it. And so it takes away one of the biggest advantages of having a Ryzen processor is the L3 cache. So that's the techno geek babble. What you're going to experience is about a 15% drop in the performance of a computer if you have a performance processor in there. So think your holiday specials with Ryzen 7 chips. You're going to see a little bit of a knock if you go to Windows 11. Good news is, is there's a fix in the pipe. It's coming out, and Microsoft should release it here by the end of the month. Uh, or worst case, Patch Tuesday next month. The second Tuesday of the month is always Patch Tuesday. So I might have to live with it for a little bit longer. But the good news is, is if you're suffering through it like me, it's going away soon. And we'll get, we'll get rid of that bottleneck and get the computer running back at full speed again. 888-250-2091. That's 888-250-2091. Let's jump into those phones. Bob, welcome to the show today. How can I help you on Compute This? Well, good morning. Uh, do you work on Apple Macs? We sure do, all the time, actually. Um, you have a what kind of Mac do you have? Uh, it's an iMac, about a year old. Okay, what's going on? Um, something happened, and it uh, it it uh, I don't know if it caught a virus. I don't think it was a virus. I think it was during an update. Gotcha. So I worked with Apple to get it fixed, and uh, basically it. Basically, they ended up wiping my mm -hmm. Mac, and everything reinstalled fine except for iTunes. Actually, the iTunes program installed, but all my music and especially my playlist did not, in, not reinstall. Gotcha. Were those backed so up on a time machine? What's that? Were they, were they backed up on a time machine backup? No. So gotcha. my question is, I have all of these iTunes and playlists on my iPhone. Can you guys transfer them from my iPhone to my iMac? The answer is possibly. 
Um, there used to be, now I haven't tried to do this myself in a long time. And then the reason that this, the, this kind of software came to pass was there are, uh, people who had old iPods and then they, you know, basically on, especially on windows, they don't have iTunes anymore. And so what do you do? You know, if you have a, I know an iPod or an iPhone and you want to sync, you want to sync it with a PC, what do you do? Um, so there is PC software out there intended to pull in this information from phones and save it in a PC, then there's a you know backward rigmarole process you could do to try to get it back into a Mac again. Um, so th- the short answer is that is not intended functionality from Apple uh, because if you hook that phone or that iPod or whatever up to your Mac, it's going to rec- iTunes will recognize it as a new device and wipe it. So oh, you don't want to hook it up to the Mac for sure. But on the other hand, you know, I haven't done that. So. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to do that. But then the other thing, one other thought that I have here is, do you, do you have um, like a, an iCloud account? Yes. Okay. Is your do, does it back up your iTunes music and playlists? No. Okay. What we might want to do, and and forgive me, guys. I fully admit I'm an Android PC guy for the most part. I know my way around a Mac, but uh, by no means am I the Mac technician that will be working on your computer. Let's get that straight right away, because you know we got guys that that do know this stuff really well. Uh, the thought occurs to me. I wonder if you can back that up to your iCloud from your phone, and then restore it on the Mac from your iCloud. So there are some potential solutions here that we can try to get through and work through with you. Um, so, yeah, that's the, definitely something we'd be happy to take a look at. Okay, so the best thing is if I want to pursue this to bring my phone and my iMac into one of your service centers? I think so, yeah. And then, uh, you know, depending on which, uh, which service center and, you know, when you bring it in, how busy we are, uh, because you're bringing your phone in as well, that people don't like to go without their phones very long. Um, so if we're, if we're in queue, it's, it probably is important to ask if we're, you know, if it's going to go up on the bench right away. And if the answer is no, because there's people in line ahead of you, we have an expedite service that you can use that will get it on the bench immediately and bypass the queue. Since you're giving us a phone as well, you might want to consider that option. Sure. That'd be great. All righty. Hey, thank you for the call, Bob. I appreciate you taking the time to join us on the program this morning. 888-250-2091. We're going to take our bottom of the hour break here, but Marlene, stay on the line. Your call as well as how to up your personal security game, specific recommendations that you can take action on right now to make yourself more secure. Coming up next on Compute This. Schrock Innovations can't teleport technicians to you, but online help is only a click away with the Schrock Desk. Subscribe today and get unlimited help whenever you need it. Schrock Innovations has spent nearly two decades working to make your technology life easier. And the all-new SchrockInnovations.com is no exception. Now you can order new modular computers and solid-state laptops directly from our website, secure your computer with our virus-free guaranteed semantic endpoint software, find innovative new technologies like our modular storage devices, and get free help and tips. Take a look at the special section to find sales on one-of-a-kind items, display models, refurbished units, and our latest special offers swing by the compute this page to watch tv segments and archived radio shows or even get one-on-one help through the schrock desk as always we respect your privacy so we secure our website with the latest encryption technology and only the most secure payment methods you can pick up your purchases at any of our three service centers or have them shipped directly to your door the new schrockinnovations.com makes technology simple it's what we do Compute this pro tip 843. Of all computer failures, the scariest and most expensive is the hard drive. But there are some steps you can take to save money and save your data before it's too late. Detecting failures early is important, so install a free utility like DriveAdvisor from driveadvisor.com to monitor your hard drive's health and receive warnings when there's a problem. But most of all, hard drive failures happen slowly, so early detection is key to reducing the repair bill. Second, if your hard drive makes any unusual noises, immediately turn off your computer and do not turn it on again. These issues are physical problems, and the more you try to use it, the worse the damage becomes. Remember that most computer repair shops do not have the specialized equipment needed to recover data from a failed drive. Never open your drive or allow anyone else to do so. Open drives always cost more to recover. Schrock does not charge for data recovery evaluations and quotes, so let the local pros look at your drive before you make any recovery decisions. This pro tip brought to you by Schrock Innovations Computer Company. I'm Steve Rappaport. 
A group of Christian missionaries reportedly kidnapped in Haiti. The group of 17 U.S. missionaries reportedly came to Haiti to build an orphanage in the capital city of Port-au-Prince. But a voice message sent to various religious missions now reports they were kidnapped by a gang on Saturday. The message comes from Ohio-based Christian Aid Ministries. Fox's Jessica Stone, a State Department spokesperson, says the U.S. government is aware of the reports. Former President Bill Clinton expected to be released today from a Southern California hospital. A Clinton spokesman says the 75-year-old is making excellent progress. He was admitted Tuesday with a non-COVID-related infection. He is expected to get more intravenous antibiotics before going home. Hillary Rodham Clinton spent time with her husband earlier. She was accompanied by their daughter, Chelsea. Fox's Marianne Rafferty. America is listening to Fox News. Now, the News Radio 1110 KFAB Weather Watch. After another chilly start in the 30s and 40s, plenty of sunshine will heat things up into the mid-70s this afternoon. Really nice out there. We'll drop into the mid-40s tonight. More sunshine on the way Monday with a few clouds late and breezier with a high of 77. With Omaha's most accurate forecast, I'm 6 News First Alert Meteorologist Mallory Schnell. 41 Omaha Council Bluffs, 37 in Lincoln. All righty, folks, I hope everybody got their coffee refilled. I hope Winston got Maggie some donuts because we're ready to continue on on Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company. We've got four locations to help you out when your computer is on the fritz, when your updates won't update, when your hard drives won't hard drive. You know, we can we can help you with all those problems right in any of the service centers. We also offer free pickup and free drop-off within 30 miles of our service centers so we can come out to you pick up at your place, fix it, bring it back out to you, whatever the case might be, to whatever makes you comfortable. 888-250-2091. As promised, Marlene, welcome to the program. How can I help you today on Compute This? Okay, thank you. First of all, I want to thank Brian. He's always very patient when I come to your, awesome. your center. And and I do not, I'm very computer illiterate. Um my computer is very old, but you have installed Windows 10 on it. Now, okay. how do I do the update? Okay. So when you when you have Windows 10 on the computer, you're, if it was old before and now you're on Windows 10, you're probably not going to Windows 11. So Microsoft is no, going, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, Microsoft is going to release uh, an update every six months for your computer, and these are called feature upgrades. Um, these feature upgrades are different from the patches that you get once a month. Um, this, this is not the monthly patch Tuesday. This is a bigger deal. And so Microsoft releases this one. That do you, we're expecting it at, at the end of this month. Now, of course, it can be pushed back, but the fact that this one is already wrapped up with a bow on it tends to lead us to believe it's going to be released on schedule this time. Um, so basically, we're looking at the end of October here. At some point, Microsoft doesn't tell us the day. They don't tell us the day of the week. Usually it's a Thursday. I uh, don't know why, but it usually is. Um, they don't. Yeah, we get no heads up. Literally, all of a sudden, it just appears, and we're like, oh, there it is. And uh, then we test it on our computers in the service center, and then we push it out to all of our subscribers to the safe upgrade product that we have. So as far as how you can get the update, there's two ways. The, the easiest way is to bring it in and let's let Brian do it in the Omaha service center. You know, he'll, he'll get it up on the bench, get it done, get it right back to you. Um, if that's not possible or you don't want us to come pick it up and drop it off or anything like that, if you want to rather do it with the uh, – online yourself, basically, you can go to our website at schrockinnovations.com and you can purchase a copy of Safe Upgrade. It does, the, it does the update exactly the same way that Brian would do it on the bench in the service center. It just does it at home so that you don't have to truck it around anywhere or wait in line to get it back. Okay. Okay. So bring it in or pick it up. You got Is there it. A cost for picking it up? Oh no, not at all. We don't charge. It's free pickup and free drop off within thirty miles of the service center. So, as long as you're not calling from, you know, we got some people watching here from Michigan. So I got to qualify this free pickup thing. Um, so, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but as long as you're not calling from like you know Michigan or something, you know, we're good to go. Okay, sounds great. Thank you. All right, thank you, Marlene. I appreciate you taking the time to call on the program today. All right, so. The need for personal security and privacy. We, we've gone from a world of I'm not doing anything on my computer that I'm worried about or I'm not doing anything with my computer that's that important or you don't need this kind of security unless you have something to hide, you see. 
we've gone from that realm to the realm of if somebody can access your computer without your permission and use it for whatever they want to use it for, you're absolutely right. They don't really care about your computer. What they care about is finding a vulnerability that is repeatable across hundreds of thousands or millions of computers so they can take your computer, put it together with those other ones, and leverage it as part of what's called a botnet to attack other things on the Internet. This is what the Russians do. This is what the Chinese do. They don't harness the power of millions of Chinese computers. No, they harness the power of millions of your computers and use it to attack you. And so how do you stop this? How do you, how do you keep your computing power under your control? And the answer is actually really, really simple. Um, so first of all, for those of you who have a smartphone, there's an app that you should have on your phone. This app is called Authy, A-U-T-H-Y, Authy. It is the Google Authenticator app, all right? What this app does is when you go to a website, if you turn on the security feature called two-factor authentication, when you go to the website, it says, what is, the, what is your Google Authenticator code? And you open up the app on your phone, and about every minute and a half, it changes the code. So it's like, a, it's like having the nuclear football with you, and the code keeps changing, right? And so the, ch the code changes. You type in your six-digit code, and it confirms that you are, in fact, you because you have access not just to – this is much safer than text message passwords, like uh, the, the two-factor authentication where it texts you a password because that can be spoofed. You can get another a person who clones your phone or somebody who steals your phone number and gets your text messages. But the Authenticator app can't be spoofed. So when you have Authenticator installed on your phone, this is the number one way to improve the security of your personal uh, life, basically, because you can go to Facebook, you can go to Google, you can go to all the websites that you go to, any financial sites, bank websites, they all support two-factor authentication now. All you have to do is turn it on in the settings. Now, why don't they turn it on by default? People don't like the hassle of having to take another step when they log in. So click Remember Me and save it and don't log out. And you don't have to do it that often then. And it's one extra little step that's going to keep you way, way, way safer on the Internet. People can't log into your account and steal your crypto if you have two-factor authentication installed. People can't log into your email and see what's going on in your life if you have two-factor authentication installed. People can't steal your Facebook if you have two-factor authentication installed. It's pretty straightforward stuff. Check your privacy settings while you're in there, too. Always a good plan. But in a world where everyone tells you, change your password, change your password, you could change your password today, and tomorrow someone could trick you into giving them the password. It's actually more likely to happen after you change the password because you just monkeyed around with stuff. So if you get a request for to confirm your password, you're likely to click the link and type your password in. You just gave them your flipping password. Don't do that. I say don't do that. Just like I say every week, don't answer the calls. It's not really Microsoft. They're not, your IP address is not infected with a virus. But people in my family get the call, and they answer it. And then they're like, is that real? I'm like, no. No, it's not real. Did you give them your credit card number? Good, good. Not real. Just check. I thought it might have been you. No, it wasn't me. My name is not Marty, and I don't, I'm not calling from India. 888-250-2091. So there are some other things you can do to improve your personal security that are a little more aggressive. Uh, I would recommend if you uh, use an Android device especially, uh, not because it's any less secure than an Apple device, but because um, Google devices, with Android devices, you're allowed to change default applications. Um, with your Apple device, you're forced to use iMessage. Um, but you can install an app called Signal on your device. Signal is a text messaging app that's fully encrypted end-to-end. -end. Um, it's pretty neat. It works well. It's free. They are a uh, 501c3 charity, so if you are looking for something to donate to, you know, I throw some money at them every year because I use their product a lot and I enjoy it. Um, it allows me to communicate with my staff in a secure way. So if we have to talk about customer personal details to facilitate a repair, like a password, it's being sent end-to-end -end encrypted and everything is protected. Uh, so it's good stuff there. Um, so you can install Signal on your devices and set it as your default if you have an Android device for your, uh, your text messaging. You can, as I said, install the Authy app, the Google Authenticator app, uh, to make sure you can enable two-factor authentication. You can get a VPN. 
Um, Take your pick. There's tons of them out there, guys. Um, I'm recommending ExpressVPN. That's what I use. Uh, apparently, they got bought here recently, and there was some. There's. I can give you the backstory in the aftershock, but there's a. They, they got bought by a shady guy, and so everyone's kind of like, hmm, I don't know. But I'm paid for the year, so I'm going to keep using it till I'm done for sure, and then maybe I'll reassess at that point. But uh, these are the things that you should be doing right now to protect your digital identity. And if you're not doing those things, give us a call in the service center. Even though we don't sell. ExpressVPN and Google Authenticator is free. We'll help you set them up. That's what we do for people is we help. 888-250-2091. We're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, NASA is getting set up to help Australia send a rover to the moon. Interesting that this would be done right now, isn't it? Did Australia suddenly like get really interested in moon space rovers and NASA got a sudden wild hair to go back to the moon with a rover to drive around on the lunar surface. I mean, didn't we do that like in the 60s? Well, this one's autonomous. It's like a Tesla rover. So maybe that's the difference. We're going to tell you what's going on coming up next on Compute This. If you can dream it, Schrock Interactive's website developers can make it happen. Refresh your website, automate sales and marketing, and grow your business today with Schrock Interactive. Some people like desktops for their power and upgradability, but nothing rivals a laptop for computing on the go. But why should you have to sacrifice performance for portability? The innovators at Schrock want our customers to have it all. So we created a new kind of laptop, the Solid State Laptop from Schrock Innovations. Solid State Laptops are built using the same frame and main boards as regular laptops, but we've removed half of the moving parts while more than doubling the computer's speed. The result? Laptops that boot to Windows in six seconds or less, respond instantly to your commands, and can survive drops that put most laptops into the data recovery lab. Starting at only $4.99, Solid State Laptops give you speed, reliability, durability, and performance for the same price most people pay for a cheap disposable laptop. The next time you're looking for a laptop, check out the Solid State Laptops at SchrockInnovations.com or visit any of our service centers. Simple, solid, fast technology is what we do at Schrock. Compute this Pro Tip 578. Technology is constantly changing, so how can you tell when the time has come to recycle your old outdated computer and invest in a new one? Experts have rules of thumb and formulas, but Schrock believes the answer is simple. You should replace your old computer when it can no longer do the things you need in a secure way. For example, you should not be using operating systems like Windows XP or Vista because they're no longer maintained by Microsoft and they're not secure. And if your computer cannot run Windows 10, it's probably time to begin saving for a replacement. If your existing computer requires a repair and that cost is 50% or more of the cost of a new computer, it might be time to consider a replacement. But keep in mind, additional costs like data transfers and important software you have to upgrade like genealogy software or Quicken. And also keep in mind that modern computers are engineered to last 18 months for a normal user. And don't worry, you are considered a normal user. Schrock modular PCs and solid state laptops are specifically designed to last four to six years for that same normal user, saving your family money and time. This pro tip brought to you by Schrock Innovations Computer Company. All righty, folks, final segment of the show. The hour has flown by, but fear not. The show continues after the closing music in the Aftershock. That's right, on Facebook.com slash Shrock Innovations. We do another little show called the Aftershock. A little more stream of conscious, a little less planned. Um, weird things happen. You know, we, we have disclaimers. Sometimes the video makes it up. Sometimes if something goes terribly awry, the lovely Kimberly intercepts the video and destroys it. But, you know, you got to be there. you got to see it. <laughs> we do that at Facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations right after the program is concluded. Give me uh, three or four minutes to get everything reconfigured and reconnected uh, after the conclusion of the program. 888-250-2091 is the number to join us on the program. It's not too late to get in and ask a question to get in that drawing for a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate either. And that could come in really handy because, uh, as I mentioned at the start of the program, if you missed the beginning... Uh, Microsoft is releasing 2.1 H2. This is the final large Windows update, the fall update, for Windows 10. So if you moved to Windows 11, this doesn't concern you. You're on Windows 11. This is an update for Windows 10. doesn't matter that the Windows 10 and 11 version numbers will be exactly the same after the update. That won't be confusing to anybody at all for any reason. But if you have Windows 10, you need this update. If you have Windows 10, 
Microsoft is going to try to automatically install this update on you. If you have an older computer, Microsoft may not try to automatically install it, which is just as bad because if you get too far behind on your updates, you don't get any more updates. I know that makes no sense to anybody, but if you don't get any updates, then you're not going to get any new updates. That's for sure. Yeah, this just in newsflash, Ron Burgundy. So what I mean here is these big updates that come out. If you get more than two versions behind, Microsoft doesn't send you the regular monthly updates anymore. The small ones, the emergency patches that close vulnerabilities and keep your computer safe. So we got to make sure you get those. And the only way we can make sure you get those is to make sure you get the big ones. So to take all the confusion out of the process, Schrock has made a product called Safe Upgrade. The reason we created this is it seemed to happen to the same people every upgrade. But there's about 20% of the people out there who get absolutely destroyed by this update. Their computers won't reboot. They lose data. I mean, and they come into the service centers and you, they can't yet. They, we didn't do it. They know that. But you can't really yell at Microsoft and we're sitting right there, you know, and they're not frustrated with us. And we realize that. But there's only so much of that you can absorb in a day before you're like, this, this can't go on. We're getting associated with this because they have to keep bringing it in here for us to fix it when Microsoft keeps screwing it up for them. So how do we how do we deal with this? We came up with this product called Safe Upgrade that allows you to safely to make sure your computer is safely upgraded to the newest version of Windows 10. And that way, there's no tears. There's no gnashing of teeth. There's no screaming. The price is much, much lower than having a problem fixed after the fact, like a lot lower. So you can go on our website at schrockinnovations.com, click on shop and then specials. And you want to pick up one copy of Safe Upgrade for each computer that you want to safely upgrade to Windows 10 to 1H2. You don't have to worry about license keys or any of that rigmarole. We figure it, we've cracked the code on that stuff. You don't need that anymore um, because we all want to type in 25 digit long keys. Do you put the dashes in or not? Is that a zero or an O, a B or an eight? I can't tell. Yeah, we, we all want to go through that in life. But now you just sign into your Schrock account with a computer. And if it has a license in your account, Congratulations, it can upgrade that computer. If you sign into a different computer and you have another license in your account, congratulations, you can upgrade that computer too. And we just move forward that way. So it works out really well. Now, something that's interesting that it kind of caught my eye, I know we're not like a space program here. Uh, we're a computer technology help kind of program. But when I see a cool space story, I kind of felt like I wanted to share this one with you. Maybe I should have just saved this one for the aftershock. But on the backdrop that... Australia is doing a lot of things with the United States all of a sudden. Um, they're very active in the Pacific region together. The United States is providing nuclear submarines to Australia. Um, the Australians are standing with the United States in opposition to China's dominance in the region. Uh, Australia has buddied up with Taiwan. We'll, we'll help defend you. Um, wow, you know, that's pretty significant stuff. And China still had to buy Australian coal because they don't have enough coal to heat everything this winter. So and I guess they had a really bad cold snap in China the last week or something, and it pushed the reserves even you know more critical than they already are. If, they, if we have a cold winter anywhere in the world this year, guys, it's not going to be pleasant for, for a lot of people. Um, but in the meantime, we're concerned as to whether or not lunar regolith, you know, moon dirt, has oxygen in it. That'd be kind of cool, right? Like there's oxygen in the dirt. You could just breathe the dirt and you could stay alive on the moon. Who would have tried that? You know, seriously, you're on the moon. Your helmet comes off. I wouldn't have stuck my face in the dirt and tried to take a deep breath. I mean, I just wouldn't have been the first thing I would I'd probably look for the helmet first, you know. But wow. No, I mean, obviously you're not going to breathe dirt. But if they can find oxygen in the regolith, it's the potential is there to process the regolith to remove the oxygen. And then you don't have to transport oxygen to the moon. It's already there. Also, if you find water, water already there. Water has oxygen in it, too. And it's kind of, you know, watery. We need that. So there's a lot of cool things happening here. So apparently, um, this is one of those stories. Uh, I'm surprised this is not an Elon story, honestly, because this is a semi-autonomous rover going to the moon. And I'm pretty sure he already launched a roadster toward Mars, Um it's going to like orbit there and the paint's going to like die. You know, the, the, it was a red roadster. It's going to be completely like bleached out metal by the time it gets there. Um, the sun apparently is very nasty in space. 
But the Australian government has signed an agreement with NASA that will see an Australian-built semi-autonomous rover be included in future missions to the moon and eventually Mars. According to the Australian Space Agency, the Foundation Services rover, that's what they're calling it. It's the Foundation Service. It's a very Australian name. What are we going to call it? Freedom? Curiosity? Uh, let's call it Foundation Services. Yeah, why not? Okay, Foundation Services it is. Uh, the Foundation Services rover will be used to help collect lunar soil known as regolith, which will then be examined for oxygen to see whether it can be used to support human life in space. The rover is expected to be capable of operating on the moon to be... Well, that that's good, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, we... <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I feel like I'm reading someone's bullet points here. Like, if we were going to launch a rover to the moon, it needs to, one, be capable of operating on the moon. Two, <laughs> be capable of being launched into space. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so it needs to be able to provide, this is what, I thought this was interesting, provide lunar regolith to NASA, to a NASA payload with a high level of autonomy. So, to a NASA payload, does that mean they're going to like be analyzing it like back here, or are they going to analyze it in orbit around the moon? Or they, what? What is the NASA payload? I don't know. Um, and it could, the the entire rover needs to weigh twenty kilograms or less. There are plans to see future rovers launched into space as early as twenty twenty six. So we could, you know, one year after your Windows ten dies, we could be launching Australian rovers to the moon. Pretty crazy. Uh, the rover is, this is worth, now, that's the fun story, right? If they just end the story there, it's ended on a hopeful note. We're, we're exploring the universe around us. This is great. Kumbaya, lots of countries getting together like this. Next paragraph. <clears throat> the rover is expected to be developed, expected, by a, quote, industry-led consortium, unquote. They put that in quotes for some reason, uh, probably because it's a quote of Australian businesses and research organizations, particularly those from the resources and mining sector with support from international partners to also be welcomed. All of a sudden, it's starting to sound a lot like 2026 really means 2062 here. An industry-led consortium of Australian businesses who encourage the support of outside people because they, they can't do it? I don't know. So anyway, it's uh, they, they have an, a fund over in Australia to fund this and everything. It's got money. So hopefully it gets done and we actually get this thing on the moon. But now they've got a ride with NASA to get it all the way to the moon. 888-250-2091. Alan, welcome to the program. How can I help you today on Compute This? Yeah, good morning, Thor. Morning. Um, thanks. So, uh, yeah, it's a fairly quick question. I have a iPad 4. That if when I try to um, view the uh, Facebook version of your show, it does the um, double skip, um, like you'll say two, three words, and then it'll the video and the words will go back and repeat, and then it just jumps all over the place. Weird. But I have other devices, you know, laptops, my personal iPhone, it, it plays just fine on. What is going on with that iPad? Okay, so when you're using the iPad, are you using the Facebook app or are you using a browser? I'm using the app. Okay, so we're in the app. So that I was going to say, if it was a browser, you could try a different browser. Um, and I'm assuming that we're fully updated. We've got all the most recent everything. Yep. And how old is the iPad? Um, well, it's an iPad 4. I think that was like 2016 or 2017 when it came gotcha. out. Gotcha. So it's probably wireless N technology. So it should be it should have plenty of bandwidth to get through to everything. Um, your other Apple devices are going to be newer, and so therefore they're going to have wireless AC technology. So they're going to have a higher throughput on the bandwidth. Um, so that's the, whenever you have a situation where you get a, a video that's skipping or repeating or buffering, um, the first thing I always look to is bandwidth. Um, a lot of different routers in your home will have multiple bands you can connect to. Uh, they'll have the wireless N band. They'll have you know, a wireless 5G band or a 5G2 band. Um, if you go on your phone and you scan for wireless networks and you see multiple network bands, and then you go on the iPad and you scan for networks there and you only see one, 
then we know that the iPad is an older iPad. It's got a, a, a slower Wi-Fi card in it. It still should support the viewing of the videos, though. Now, do uh, do any other videos buffer, or is it just me? Does it just not like me? Yeah, no, apparently it seems to be just you. And I used to watch you on it um, all the time. I mean, I, this started like maybe a month ago. Oh, okay. First I thought maybe it was going to start. I thought. If it was in like January, like toward the start of January, I thought, well, wow, I didn't think the conspiracy went that deep. But, you know, whew. <laughs> No, honestly, I don't have an answer for you. I'm not sure why just one program would be uh, slow on Facebook uh, using the Facebook app on two different Apple devices. If the only difference between the two things is the device, I'm not sure exactly why it would be underperforming. <laughs> the only, well, maybe I'll delete it and try reinstalling it or something. The other thing that we could do here also is, uh, depending on the background, like for example, right now I mentioned earlier in the program that there's a patch coming out that's going to specifically impact my computer. So my computer that I'm uh, monitoring the program on right now is also skipping uh, in the video. But it's skipping in the video because I'm tasking the processor to do an ungodly number of things in the background. And some of those things, when it hits those more intense things, it, uh, it tends to suck up all the resources and makes the video skip. So if there's something going on with the iPad in the background, other apps running in the background that are using a lot of resources, that could also cause video problems. But you would see that video problem across all videos. It wouldn't just be the Compute This videos. So that's why I'm having yeah, a little no, trouble. I can watch YouTube on it. I can watch other videos. No, I meant other Facebook uh, videos. Oh, yeah. No, I can watch other Facebook videos. Fine. Well, golly. Yeah. They just singled you out. I guess so. I mean, uh, it's good to be king, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you for the call, Alan. I appreciate it. All right. Going to pick our winner here. Marlene, congratulations. You've got yourself $25 coming your way. We'll get you all taken care of with that on Monday when we get our front desks back into the service centers. Uh, right now, the Lincoln, Des Moines, and Omaha service centers have open bench spots. Papillion uh, is uh, is flexing a little bit. They're busy working on some side projects. Hmm, what could that be? What are they doing in Papillion that would be interesting at the end of the year? Fun times. All right. Stay tuned for the Aftershock. We'll have that coming up next, guys. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next weekend for another exciting edition of Compute This. From the Amish Furniture of Nebraska Studio, your home for made-in-the-USA furniture, this is...